into the record books. <clears throat> so when people get the tape and they, you know, Brother uh, A. A. Rashida was just up here. We're presenting the occult symbolism in film. War stars, not Star Wars. War stars, cinematic sorcery, and the Hollywood sacrifice of Heath Ledger. You do know that that was a sacrifice. If you don't know, the brother's going to go into great detail about Heath Ledger and any t anything you've seen on television for more than like a day, and they keep bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. It's something ritualistic that went on with it. You could tie it into the Super Bowl, uh, the Olsen twins. He'll get into all of that. Also, um, Vantage Point, The Golden Compass, Jumper, the movie out now where they dimension hopping and stuff we've been talking about for a while. Uh, you know, it seems like they watch our, our tapes and then they go make movies. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Cloverfield, who, what, when, where, why, the whole breakdown. Uh, Brother Ampool from Philadelphia will come up to New York and he'll be breaking down the astrological autopsy of Hollywood. So he's going to go down on some ritual deaths and the astrological breakdown to show you how it was lined up cosmically. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, co-founder of Wu-Tang, one of the main producers, True Master will be in the building and he's going to have some groundbreaking information and some secret documents never before seen about who, uh, who we are and things of that nature. So that's going to be at Long Island University Sunday, March 9th. Does anybody know what March 9th is in hip hop? March 9th. Biggie. Biggie, Biggie made the ascension. Ah, very good, very good. So that's going to be jumping off. Uh, donation is $15. Uh, you can contact Brother A.A. A. Rashid at 718-506-4518 or contact me, 917-292-6769. Now, I put this up because we're close to the Underground Railroad, am I correct? This is a historic town where... Uh, Harriet Tubman was bringing slaves from the south to the north uh, on, 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 the freedom, on the freedom trail. Yeah, this is Tim too. All right, you know what I'm saying? So she was a warrior. Uh, see, a lot, of, a lot of, especially in hip hop today, they don't show the warrior images of our queens, of our sisters. They're not all, they ain't all got their butt out, this and that. A lot of them are warriors and they're and they ready to go down for the struggle. So Harriet Tubman was putting it in. And remember, we are still, this is the Underground Railroad that we are rebuilding right here. This is why we are all here. So it may not be a physical Underground Railroad, but remember, we, you know, we mental people, spiritual people. This may be more of a mental or spiritual Underground Railroad that we are putting in place right here, right now. I felt Tupac was also a sort of Harriet Tubman because he delved in both worlds. He dealt with the thug life and all that, but he was also on some positive, dear mama, Brenda got a baby. So he was kind of going, hanging out with the thugs and saying, well, let's, you know what I'm saying? Get right at the same time. So what we're doing now is we are rebuilding this underground railroad everywhere we go around the country. So, I wanted to open up with that. Okay, this is just some flicks with Harriet Tubman and some people she freed. Now, she, she physically freed them. The mental uh, slavery is still going on as we know, but this is why we're here. We're here to uh, continue the work of our ancestors who came before us. It is our duty to do so. In the medium which we are Equipped to do so. You follow? So everyone ain't gonna pick up a gun. Some brothers are here to provide information. Rising Suns has an underground railroad outlet. So if you ever get lost along your spiritual journey, you stop in the Rising Sun bookstore, you pick up some gems, you're on your way. And to your next location, you might come to New York, to LIU, which is our underground railroad port, and you might get some information and you can continue to be on your way. All right, this is just some of the maps. This showing, you know, some of the locations in which we migrate. All the dark 
uh, you know, states, those were the slavery states and the north states, which everyone was migrating to, uh, you know what I'm saying, are the states where the so-called free states, and you see I'm doing free like this, okay? Bear with me, I might have to put this over on this side, so I can stop. All right, this is just a little map breakdown of, of, of some of the key players and see it says stockholders of the Underground Railroad Company. So we were stock, we were the first stock. Okay, the very word Wall Street, who was the first stock on Wall Street? Us. You see what I'm saying? So we need to be very clear with that. And, okay, let's, let the, this is just a, a picture of them. This is Wall Street, bringing that stock in, bringing us in. You know what I mean? Chattel slavery in particular, which is the worst kind because that means they had the right to break your family up. It's one thing to say, all right, I'm going to enslave a family. It's another thing to say, the father's going to go here, the mother's going to go here, the children are going to go here, and you never can reconnect. This is why we really don't know how all connected we are. Due to, uh, you know, due to chattel slavery. This is some of the stock that's on Wall Street today. Let's not get it twisted, all right? Because they are still, they, they, a lot of these artists you see here, athletes, actors, they still control the stock market. This is why every now and then LeBron got to come down and ring the bell, or Jordan when he puts out a new sneaker, or when Jordan decided to come back and play in the NBA that one last time, you saw the fluctuation of the stock market. Now, how is this possible? It is possible because we are who we are. And they know we are the trendsetters of the world, especially hip hop. But Jay, if Jay-Z come out and say, we wearing green polka dot pants tomorrow, you better invest in some green polka dot pants if you want to get paid. So when he comes out and says, this is the new liquor, in his rhyme just yesterday, he got a new song out with Mary J. Blige, and he made the comment, I'm the Obama, the Barack Obama of rhyme. So he plugged Obama's name in, and here it is, Obama, they asked him recently, whose number that you have on your phone that we might be very surprised about? And he said, Jay-Z. And we know Jay-Z is President Carter from Def Jam. They was calling him President Carter when he was with Def Jam. Just showing you some of the connections of what's going on now. Jay-Z is an admitted drug pusher, hustler, all of this. And here it is, Obama is saying, yeah, that's my man, son. That's basically what he said. He didn't say it in that language. But for those of us who speak hip-hop, that's what he said. Oh, that's my man, son. Jay, that's my boy. He moving weight, I'm over here moving weight. It may have came out more properly, like, oh, I like Jay-Z, but this is what's really going on. Meanwhile, he denounced Farrakhan quickly. He was like, oh, nah, I, son, I ain't with son, nah. Now here it is, Farrakhan ain't a drug dealer, push-up, pimp, and all that. We may not agree with all of his methods, but he did build an army, he built his own nation. <laughs> Okay? If anything, you would figure, well, let me give him some props and a hustler from the street corner. Uh, but this is going to show you how all of this works out. So this is the slaves on the stock market today. They just don't have chains on their neck, but they do have chains on those brains. And they do, because if you, if, if, if uh, Kobe make 50 million, you know uh, his slave owner makes 500 million. Okay, Larry Davis. Anybody heard of Larry Davis? All right. Recently, uh, he was he was killed in prison. Actually, uh, you know, 1986. Just to kind of bring you up to speed, he used to sell drugs for the police. Larry Davis, right? Boule. Okay. He used to sell drugs for the police, and. I think he was getting a little too big or something, or he was supposed to, his money wasn't right, 
And they came through to, to, to get that money. Now, he knew that they was going to kill him because he knew too much about the police. He knew too much about the inner workings of the operation. He was tired of paying them. He was tired of paying them. You know, like, you know something? Why, why I got to keep paying you? So they came to see him, and he let off. Shot six of them. As a matter of fact, they, they was running. They was ducking. You see what I'm saying? Because when you pin a black panther in a corner, ball game. If I'm fearing for my life and you got me in a corner, I'm taking the whole block out. Especially a black man who got some heart. Now, I don't condone... I'm not condoning violence. I'm simply saying the police were coming to kill him. He beat all those charges, all of them. But they brought him up on some other murder charges because they just couldn't let him walk. They couldn't say, you're going to beat all these charges, you can go home. So they had to trump up some other charges so he can do time. They gave him 25 to life. Now, the day before he got killed in jail, BET was coming to interview him the next day. They was going to make another episode of American Gangster and tell his story. The dude who knocked him off wasn't even supposed to be in the yard. He didn't have no yard privileges because he was, he was crazy or something. All of a sudden, he's in the yard when he ain't supposed to be in the yard. Now, I showed you two pictures because this is who the brother became. He became Muslim, cleaned up his life. So I like to show, if I can, different dimensions of an individual. You can't judge people in the early stages of their lives. Don't judge me in the first inning. It's a nine inning ball game. Give me a chance to, you know, do what I do. All right, there was, uh, somebody did put out a street uh, DVD breaking down his story, but BET was about to do a big, you know, American gangster story on him, and it's coincidental that the very next day they, they was coming, he was killed. And remember, he only had another year to do. He was coming home. He had a book deal on the table, a movie deal on the table. He had a lot of things on the table. And he was going to tell what he knew. Now, this may all tie into the Sean Bell shooting because all of a sudden you tell your story and the Sean Bell killing is jumping off at the same time. It may rile the people up or something. It may, you know what I'm saying? So we got to be careful on how that works out as well. All right, this brings me to this, American Gangster. As I said, he was going to do an episode for American Gangster. I like to show you this because whenever you see the number one actor, the number one rapper, and the number one so-called black TV network, because remember, Illuminati does things in three. The ritual is in three. Whenever you see this lined up like this, you know this is a ritual. You see what I'm saying? To get everyone, synchronicity is crazy. So the number one actor, the number one rapper, and the number one TV network that we're watching are all pushing the same story, the same thing. And A.A. Rashid did an excellent job of breaking down what American Gangster was really about in our latest DVD. It's on the table over here. Uh, we did a conference in the Hip Hop Conference two weeks ago and so forth and so on. Look at Jay-Z. You can see his silhouette. He coming out of the darkness or out of the light into the darkness. So you know what I'm saying? You got to watch the symbolism going on in all three in black and white. You see what I'm saying? Synchronicity. All right? And that's how mind control works a lot of times. All right? What they do is you, you have a vibration, let's say. Let's say your vibration is 30 megahertz, let's just say. What they do is they match it, right? And then they, ship, they send that vibration towards you and you automatically think it's a friendly vibration because it's your vibration. But they attach a file onto the shit. Just like you email a file, they attach the program onto the shit. And you open up and bam, done. All right? Also understand this with your blood. I can take a vial of your blood, and this is a fact. Let's say you have multiple sclerosis, just say, I could take a vial of your blood, take it 50 miles away, put it in a storage bin. Let's say you cure yourself of the multiple sclerosis. Do you know the blood in that vial will cure itself as well? It will be a perfect match. Understand what's going on. So the mind control is deep because all they've got to do, and we've all given blood at some point or another. 
All they got to do is tamper with the blood 50 miles away. We're dealing with diabolical people here. All right, so let's be clear. You can look that up any way you want. That is a fact with this blood situation. All right, but this is a true American gangster right here. All right, while you sitting there watching the hood gangsterism, these is global gangsters sucking all the blood, taking all away your liberties because that's supposed to be mother liberty and all that. He's showing you, I got that on smash. I'm sucking all of life out of every liberty you thought you had. And quiet as kept, he might be a real vampire. Not fairy tale, like a real, you know, because they into that. You know, they into blood and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be moving a little quick so we can kind of get in, but I just want to show you different aspects of this thing. Now, boom, oh, yeah. We had a lunar eclipse. Now, the night Larry Davis died, was on the lunar eclipse. Just want to throw that out there too. So, you know, a lot of times these rituals line up like that. And the moon was in Virgo. And the moon was in Virgo. Okay? So, I want to say this also, they shot the satellite out the sky. The same night. The same time at 1026 is when they decided to shoot the satellite out the sky. What a coincidence. All right, so that goes to show you that it was a global ritual. Okay, keep this in mind. They could have shot it out if the satellite was so dangerous. Why does it, the, the, the exact moment that this, eight, this lunar eclipse is in its apex, and when did they shoot the, did anybody know where they shoot, shot the missile from? Hawaii. That's where your boy lived. That's where your boy is from. Barack Obama. Okay? So let's keep that in mind too. All right? So just, just line it up. Just showing you, uh, this is all hip hop. See, because we got to get out of the, 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 the context of thinking hip hop is just, um, no, he want to ask you, let, let, the, let, let the young elder. Yes, sir. How do they shoot the sound? Uh, they shot it up with a missile from off like a, I think it was a military base. They shot a kinetic missile into it. Kinetic missile is something that builds momentum. Like As it gets closer. It wasn't an explosive that goes inside and explodes like inside. It was built off of just a projectile, like a rail gun. Remember that movie? Mm -hmm. Where they made a gun that could shoot a projectile directly through a house? Mm -hmm. The same principle. So the speed picks up momentum and then shatters whatever it hits it. There it is. All right. Okay, this is just a picture of the satellite. Now, so when you think satellite, you think communications. Also, remember, we were in Mercury retrograde. We had just came out of Mercury retrograde, and Mercury is the planet of communications. So understanding that what they're doing too, they're shutting down our communication. May not be the physical communication, maybe our kinetic communications and so forth and so on. Because they waited deliberately because we came out of Mercury Retro, even though there's a two-week pre, two-week post, you know what I'm saying, with the retrograde, but it is, Mercury is the planet of communication. They say don't sign no contracts while in Mercury Retrograde and things like that. All things go haywire, uh, transportation, and, and it, it's true. Watch when we in Mercury Retrograde, watch how many planes are delayed, how many crashes, a lot of that stuff lines up. Okay, Oprah, Oprah, you know I'm about to get on Oprah, <laughs> no, Oprah um, started a new network called Oprah Winfrey Network, or O-W-N, OWN, or if you go backwards it's N-W-O, which is New World Order, okay, so understand, listen, guys, you know Oprah's Illuminati, you know Oprah's Illuminati, Come on, come on now. She has control over too many minds not to be. All right? And we also see, you know what I'm saying, who she really down with and all that old kind of stuff. So a lot of times you switch the numbers around. And she launched this. She made this company known on the lunar eclipse. All right? So let's be clear with that. It all started with this. Secret.
Now we in the hood, we had already had, I had, my, I already sold 500 of those on the underground, easy. But when it went, when Oprah gave the platform for the secret and brought all those Rosicrucians, cause you know, they was all Rosicrucians. She brought all them Rosicrucians up on stage. It opened up a vortex because what Oprah says it is. If, like I said before, if Oprah take my book and hold it up, I'm out of here. I'm done. Straight cash like that. So, Oprah opened up a vortex. You know what I'm saying? With the secret. Brought all the wonderful stories and, you know, enlightening stuff that we had already knew for years, but Oprah sort of validated it for mainstream people because I had people who, who were dead as doorknobs. When Oprah brought this show on, their lives were transformed. They seemed to get it. I'm saying, man, I've been teaching you this for two years already. They didn't get it. When Oprah brought it to our attention, they got it. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, Oprah has them locked in. She comes on at 4 p.m. She come on again at 7 on another channel. She come on at 1 in the morning. So you're going to get your dose of Oprah. All right? But lately... She's got a new one. Uh, this Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle joint, A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. Mm. Now see, you want to say something? Oh, oh, okay. So, from the secret, I'm just showing how you open up a little dimension here. From, a, from the secret to a new earth. Alright? What she's doing, and, and this, she opened up a book club uh, a, a club, not even a book club, like a gathering with like 40,000 people uh, joining up for this discussion panel or she's going to have online. And she kept saying stuff like, you need to empty your mind out. You know what I'm saying? If you want to come on to our uh, club, empty, whenever somebody's telling you to empty something out, that means they want to put some other shit in. That's obvious. If I empty out a glass, you want to put some other shit in the glass. Yes? Silence Speaks was his book before this. Okay, I'm pretty sure in general the information is probably phenomenal. It's probably some good information in there. But when Oprah gets on board like this, and remember from the secret to a new earth, she opened up her own vortex. And this is what, uh, like I said, on the lunar eclipse is when she was saying open up your, you know, empty your head out, stuff like that. So this ritual is all lined up. All right? Get the book, it might be good. Especially if you're conscious, see if you're conscious or, or you spiritual way, you can read and do anything. You, 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 you exempt to the shit. I can go sit in the mosque, I can go to church, I can hang on the corner with some hood drug dealers. You become immune to it because you're creating your own reality. And we all can be in different frequencies and different zones all in the same room. This is why some, some of the information I bring, certain dudes in the hood may not understand it, don't get it. But certain people do. Drug dealers is getting money and all that. I, I'm, I'm basically saying, wah, 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 wah. I'm speaking a total different language to them, and that's cool, but we all can be in different dimensions and occupying the same space, so to speak. We on different frequencies. Okay, so, uh oh, this is... P. Diddy, Diddy and the Family. He also got, came out with No Way Out, which is NWO, or New World Order, right after Biggie, uh, you know, right after he uh, pumped Biggie out, you know, or looked the other way, or whatever, or sacrificed Biggie, okay? And look, these niggas ain't even in the hood. Look at the backgrounds, trees, grass. I'm trying to figure this shit out. It's, all this is hood niggas. These niggas is from the projects. But, you know, I'll leave, leave that for Rashid to, to get into it. Now, Tupac, as I mentioned before, he was sort of like a modern-day Harriet Tubman. He moved between dimensions. You know what I'm saying? He was smacking that ass, but he was also saying, look, sister, let's do this, let's do that. And I think they had a hard time trying to figure him out. You know what I'm saying? We do know who his parents were, so you know he was going to get it anyway. You know what I'm saying? His parents were Black Panthers and so forth and so on. I don't need to get into Tupac's history. You should know it by now. But as we mentioned this sacrifice, it seemed like when Tupac made the ascension is when Suge 
really reached his height, his prominence. You know what I mean? Suge, Snoop, they all kind of, you know, benefited from the death of Tupac Shakur. I don't know what Suge is in now. I think Suge is a born again Christian. Is that what it is? Suge broke. Well, he broke. That's when you, that's when you want to find God, right? Yeah, nigga broke, nigga want to find God. Okay, this is uh, a Rashid's boy. We know that when he was sacrificed, um, that Diddy became who he was. Now, I'm not suggesting that this was purposely done, but I'm not suggesting that it wasn't. When you're dealing on these high levels of this Illuminati, sacrifices have to be made, blood in, blood out. They may come to me and say, look, Wayne, uh, you, you want to be up with us? You got to get rid of the little man. And you have to say, all right, little man got to go. And you be at the funeral crying, knowing damn well you was in on the fix to kill your little son and shit. You follow what I'm saying? But these things have to be done because we need to be able to trust you and we need to be able to find out who your allegiance is to. Is your allegiance to your family or is your allegiance to this family that we have over here? You see what I'm saying? It's like that, I got you a question. Yes, sir. And I want to say this, having an inside note that I have on the industry. This is going to sound really harsh, but I've said it from day one, the moment I heard about it. What do you, I've said it. This is deep grass here. In my humble opinion, that's what Kanye did to his mother. Well, we're going to get to that. Okay. What you been watching my lecture on the down low? <laughs> okay, now, big pun. He went out, and his boy became a megastar. Because let's face it, Fat Joe was okay. Big Pun was the man. And I understand Big Pun had a weight issue, but he said, nigga, I just lost 100 pounds. I'm trying to live. You see what I'm saying? That's what he said. So Fat Joe became a mega star once Big Pun made the transition. Now, now we get to Kanye's mind. And look at the title of the book. It's called Raising Kanye. So if he needs to be raised to another level, because this is what death does, it transforms you somewhere else, ritualistically speaking. You see what I'm saying? As A. A, a, a. Rashida was saying, Puffy constantly looking for people to die so he can go somewhere else. You follow? And it, juxtapose the positions. Put Kanye where his mother is and put his mother where Kanye is. And it, he looked like he in a coffin, right? So understand what happens during this ritualistic situation. His mother, did anybody know the date his mom died? Technically she died November 10th, but the news didn't come out until November 11th. That's 11, 11, that's a porthole right there. Whenever you see the number 11, you see what I'm saying, you get the porthole in the middle. And 11, 11, 2007. Two and seven is what? Nine, eleven. Okay, now we're going to get to that. I want you to keep nine, eleven in your mind for a second. When you do his mother's death in reverse, it's two and seven. We know that's nine, eleven. Remember, in the movie Matrix Reloaded, when Morpheus, Neo, and Trinity were on their way up the elevator to see the Merovingian. And Morpheus said to Neo, Neo, tell me what you see. He said, the whole building is wired with explosives. And they got off on the floor 101, showing you the twin towers, but the void in the middle, okay? That's like open portholes and stuff, okay? So this is when Kanye became, and now Kanye gonna go somewhere else with it. I'm telling you now, all right? And he even threw the shit into his act. He was, you know, after his mom's passed, he, he, he on stage crying, and then he go into that song about his mom's. As right on cue, that's a part of his act now. Same way, you know, Biggie, I mean, Puffy came out with the song for Biggie, Missing You, you know, the tribute songs and all this whole kind of stuff. DMX too. DMX as well. And Kanye's mom's, listen, first of all, she was already a beautiful lady. Let me go back there for a second. She was already a beautiful lady. There's no need she needed to uh, 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 do this and, and, and suction and, and all that. But that's that Hollywood stuff. You get out there and it's like prerequisite. You have to do that. All 
all of them black women out there are, 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 are getting twisted. All of them. Facial Vivica Fox or faces all twisted. They all do it. I don't know what it is as if they don't love the black woman or the black woman that they are. All right? So I wanted to show the, the World Trade Center going down because uh, we know that this is when Jay-Z ascended to the next level because his album came out the same day went up. All right? And he sold a million copies that week. Now it's either me or something wrong. If the country is under attack, the last thing I need is a goddamn Jay-Z album. <laughs> like, oh shit, yo, they're coming. Yo, I better get this Jay-Z album. Like it's going to save me or something. But again, just showing you the mindset of the people and the power that he had. And if I'm correct, he had just came back from France. You know what I'm saying? Being, you know, being uh, initiated on a higher level of this Illuminati shit. Him and Lior, he took his girl out there, but they took his ass out to France, which is the home of that Freemasonry shit. You see what I'm saying? The birthplace of the real, the real blue bloods. You follow? And when he, and, and the blueprint in itself speaks because it, it's the blueprint. Hip hop is over at that point. He's taken over, and blue. As A.A. Rashid breaks down when you're dealing with the Masons, the Blue Lodge, which is an illusion. Also, remember, he came out with Blue Magic. Blue illusion. Magic is illusion. He was telling you it in the song there. And he has this fixation with colors now. He, he mixed the, the, the black out. He did the black album. Then he remixed it into the gray album. Then his Kingdom Come album is red. He has a, a, a legitimate color. He has a color on file called Jay-Z Blue. Anybody know that? Jay-Z Blue. Like if you look in, in, the, in, in, in official colors, because you can, you can uh, you know, file for any color. If it's not already filed, it's called Jay-Z Blue. He says that in his raps. He say that in his raps. My favorite hue is Jay-Z Blue. My favorite hue is Jay-Z Blue. So he came on on a whole nother level with it. And we know, uh, you know, he's with uh, Bill Gates and uh, all them faggots. Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan. Uh, the Barclays. You know, because they're using him to bring this uh, arena to uh, Brooklyn. And someone is suing the whole Barclay and, and uh, Ratner and them for $5 billion because they can connect, and Jay-Z, connect them back to slavery. That's how they built the empire. I just showed you the stock market when we opened up. I'm just showing you all of this stuff is connected, but more and more information is coming out about these so-called major corporations and their connection to the real stock. You are still the stock. They just let you run around and, and so you can think you're free. Okay, understand what's going on with Mr. Jay-Z. Okay, we know the pyramid Get you uh, uh, Freemason 101, you can get any book and get the basic information on. I started something like this on my last DVD. I'll break that down at another time, get the DVD. But I simply say this to say, um, Jay-Z is not as dumb as we think he is. He's involved with a lot of things because you see him throwing this up, same thing. Look at that one. The eye in the pyramid. There it is. Eye in the pyramid. Alright? Showing you what's going on. And you know a pyramid is something that amplifies anything that's inside of the pyramid. You follow? They have done tests where they put milk inside of pyramid shaped uh, containers and it retains its freshness five times longer. They put dull razors inside. Dull razors. And they sharpen by themselves. So we know that the pyramid, you know what I'm saying? Anything inside of a pyramid, it even. Produce, it produces negative ions. And it produces negative ions the whole nine yards. So by Jay Z continuing to throw this up, whatever he's putting inside of that pyramid, mental projection inside of that pyramid, is what's being amplified, and that's why he's got so many people locked up mentally on, on who he is and what he does. 
Okay, back to uh, the number 11. As we talk, I told you to keep Kanye's moms lined in because when 9-11 recently jumped off, the last time it jumped off, we saw this. This is when Kanye and 50 both dropped their albums on 9-11. Six years after you know, the original 9-11. And it's funny because if you look at when Kanye's album came out on 9-11 and his mom's 60 days later goes out on 9-11 in reverse, again, portholes. You know what I'm saying? Because show you this ritualistic, you know what I'm saying, going on. Remember, these people are very diabolical, but the numbers are lined up, if you can peep it. Exactly. And masculine pillow, feminine pillow, if you want to, you know, go into it. And understanding the chess game, Jay-Z, 50 really wanted to go after Jay-Z. You follow me? He really wanted to go after Jay, but Jay sent his little brother after him. Now, if you can't beat my little brother, like if I got beef with you and I send my little brother, and my little brother smash you. Ball game over. I don't even have to fight you now. My little brother just beat you. So understand what's going on in the art of war with that. And then Kanye came out with a song called Big Brother. On the same album. Bigging up his big brother. You see what I'm saying? Which is Jay-Z. You know they're doing an album together now, right? Who, Nas and Jay-Z? No, 50 Kanye. Are they doing a whole album? Oh, okay. Fell for the hype, thinking that they were adversaries, and it's sort of like the political race. We'll get into that in a few. All right, this is what I call the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, because Kanye is the most transparent. Let's be real. So Jay Z calls himself God, Nas calls himself God's son, and Kanye is a goddamn ghost. You can see right through his shit. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> they all, you know. Line this up, just wanted to share that. Pimp C uh, recently died under mysterious causes. However, two weeks before, two or three weeks before he passed away, he was outing Russell Simmons, Neo, he was calling a lot of them dudes faggots, and he was adamant about it. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, he, you know, winds up dead in a hotel room at age, I believe he was 33. You follow? And they say he died of natural causes. Now we do know he was... They're not releasing the autopsy they not, until a year later. Why is that? Because it's, it's totally nebulous as to why he died. No, but no one knows. It's a pure hit. It's a pure hit. So you got to be careful of who you, you know, who you talking about if you're not spiritually lined up. If you don't give a shit, then you just don't give a shit. You know what I mean? So he was out there saying, Russell, Neo, a bunch of them. He was like, oh, these dudes are straight fudge packers. You know what I mean? And Russell do have a lot of clout in the industry, so you got to be careful. I think T.I. just recently, uh, they offered him a, a, plea, a plea deal. What, 15 years or something? Yeah, they, they got him uh, by the kahunas. You know what I mean? Because just the silencer alone, you get what, 10 years for that? Five, 10 years for a silencer? And his own people set him up as bodyguards. All right? So you got to be careful of who's in your camp and who they can get to in your camp and sell your ass down the river. And he was about to become Jay-Z of the South. He was calling himself the king. You know what I'm saying? It's funny because he did a show in New York and Jay-Z, 50, Diddy, they all came on stage with him. I think to try to like say, yo son, shut all that King stuff down. You in New York right now. Not too long after that, he gets run up on those charges. I like T.I. too. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> this is Nas's new album cover. It's called Nigger. As we know, this album was supposed to come out uh, during Black History Month, but I guess they kind of pushed it back. Now look, there's many different definitions to the word nigger. We're going to go through a few of them. Because he's sitting down with a suit on, reading a paper. 
That is anti-nigger-like when you think of what a so-called nigger is supposed to be. So he's just showing you. Now, when I think, you know, some people, when they, this is what niggers is after. Cars, rims. This has really created a stench in our community after material objects to a certain degree. So for certain people, the definition of a nigger is those who are chasing after this. You see the scantly women, bottles of champagne, guns, ice, uh, you know, ice grills, and things of that nature. So some people's definition, now, for other people, this is just get that money. You know what I mean? Why should I sit around and be broke? Or why should I, let me tell you how the young people think today. Y'all still with me? How the young people today think. They like, yo, why would I go work a nine to five and wait for a check to come every two weeks when I can get paid every hour of every day? They looking at you like you off base. Dad, what do you mean you got to get up and go work for somebody? Nah, I'm going to spit here, spit these 16 bars, you know what I'm saying, and, and get 100000 for every 16 bar I get. Now, who's crazy, him or me? These are just things we have to ask ourselves. Oh, this is a, a gangster rap coloring book. Anybody seen this? This is an actual coloring book for kids. It's called the Gangster Rap Coloring Book. It's got uh, all the gangster rap, Ice-T, uh, Snoop, Ice Cube, even got Karis one up in there. And the quotes on the back of the book is crazy, like some of the artists quoted, yo, this is crazy, son, we're looking out. Gangster rap coloring books. Could that be a definition of nigga? You follow what I'm saying? But there's that word again, so I just want to kind of go through the different definitions so we can understand that many people live in different dimensions, different definitions of what the word is, and so forth and so on. So here's Nas again. Now, for some of our elders, they remember being lynched by the KKK and being called Nigga. So they have a different perspective of the word. Because the program that's attached to them, when they hear the word nigga, they can download a program of which that the color, uh, black, white, and color of fountains, uh, being lynched, being water holes. So the very mention of the word has a vibration to it. And that vibration maybe links up with, uh, you know, their vibration from when they was young and kids and they can remember all the struggles we went through. You know what I'm saying? Under the context of this word, nigga. I don't mean to get graphic, but there's a brother hung from a tree, being lynched. Pretty sure he was called a nigga. You know what I'm saying? There's uh, one of our brothers being burned. They looking around. That's where you get the word picnic from. We do know that. Pick a nigga. You see what I'm saying? So this is what's going on with that. So a lot of our elders, when they hear the word nigga, this is what they hear. And this is why they can't relate to a lot of the younger generation because the younger generation don't have that in their DNA, so to speak. They don't have a visual uh, remembrance of what was tied to the word. So this is why we, this is where the debate comes in. Of course, that's another shot of two so-called niggers being hung. All right, so let's, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's look at it again. So now we have niggers chasing champagne women popping up. We have those being lynched, being called nigger. This is going to get deep. What we need to do is worry about police brutality now because nothing has changed. You follow what I'm saying? Sean Bell, shot 50 times. Was it because they thought he was a nigga or did it matter at all? I'm pretty sure they would have shot him even if the word nigga wasn't around. You follow? Because we can't get caught into the actual word as much as the action related to the word or who we are as a people. All right? There's my boy Amadou Diallo. Pretty sure they called Abner Louima when they piped him in the bathroom. Pretty sure they called him a nigga as well. Or what about Katrina? You know what I'm saying? When we were called refugees and stuff of that, things of that nature, we still was considered niggas. All right? Some, some young niggas trying to get away. 
hunger is going on in the world. I show this to show that it's a global thing that we go through in this, you know what I'm saying, in this world. You follow? So while there are serious issues, I say this because while there are serious issues going on in the world with police brutality, hunger, this, that, they have conferences going on right now about the word nigga. And to me that's a waste of energy. We should be combating the action attached to the word. Yes. Has he ate? No, he hasn't. But he's in the richest country on the planet. Yes. He has the most natural resources on the planet. Mm -hmm. Which is weird. You follow? So they got these big conferences going on, especially with a lot of these civil rights leaders from the 60s and so forth about the word nigga, which is a distraction. Whenever you have these big conferences going about the word, not, they ain't mentioned nothing about us getting hit in the head with billy clubs or the unemployment rate or more than 1% of America's population is incarcerated right now. The numbers are staggering. Well, they buried the word nigga. It's symbolically, right, yeah. Oh, but this is just my niggas. All depending who you ask. Some young dudes on the corner and it's a term of endearment. It's my niggas, yo. We, we just chilling. Who's to say that they wrong? Remember, they don't have, they're not connected in their DNA. Subconsciously, we, we all are. We understand. But they don't remember none of that because hip-hop in the beginning stages was bridging the gap. That's why Public Enemy and all of them had Malcolm and all of them, you know, uh, uh, Farrakhan and all of them openings to reconnect us to what the Black Panthers and the Civil Rights Movement was about. But all of a sudden, it became about get money, money holes and clothes, and all that other stuff, and it kind of created a void where the next generation of dudes don't know nothing about our history. They don't know nothing about Marcus Garvey, Noble Drew Ali, Elijah Muhammad, Emmett Till. They know nothing about that. But they know about Lil Wayne. You follow? So the music, hip hop, started out on its course to bridge the gap and you know keep our history in line and then all of a sudden the matrix kicked in and put a splice in the programming to the point where our youth don't have no record this is why they are mutating into something that I don't even understand who they are now they're not showing remnants of who we were they are totally on a whole different vibration and some of it is organic and some of it is <clears throat> you know, purposely done. But for them, this is my niggas. All right, so we back to this nigga shit again. Oh, I wanna go back and show you this. If you look at the word Nas above nigga, if you go uh, from left to right, it says sand nigga. Right? And who are the sand niggas? Boom. So it ain't just war on us, it's war on the sand niggas too. You know what I'm saying? Looking with his hands up, like, yo, don't shoot. And this is war is over God, uh, gold, oil, and drugs, among other things, stargates and real ancient artifacts, because you know what, what part of the land that is, Mesopotamia and all them, you know, ancient lands and so forth and so on. So on the surface, it's about one thing, who knows what they're really looking for? You follow? Knocked him over his head. These are some, some of the sand niggas. And finally, oh, let's get metaphysical with it. Get with the Nagas. Yeah, Nagas. You know what I'm saying? As we spoke about uh, Eugene Adams, ancient uh, Africans, uh, Africans in Asia, <clears throat> he talked about a serpent people or people who, who are us. The Nagas, and if you juxtapose to move out the vowels, because the vowels, it wasn't, it's all about consonants. There were no vowels. So Nagas, niggas, same thing. There you go. <laughs> all right, Nagas, niggas, same thing. And it talked about serpent or serpent energy. We know that's Kundalini energy. These are depictions <clears throat> of who we are as warriors. You want to say something? Yeah, that's right too, because in Nubia, Mm -hmm. Got a temple called Temple of Mega. Okay. Yeah. I think that's one that they covered up. 
Right. Yes. Okay, so just going to show you all depending where you're vibrating with the word nigga. You follow? I just got finished saying yes. Really quickly, and if you want to put this theory to the test, don't lay it for a book, lay it for a document. Go up to an old Chinese person. Pull him to the side, because I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He forced a mad stab, and I pulled this old Chinese dude to the side. I, I said, is it true that this dude is just selling the name for the title? He said, yes. And I said, what was the name of the teacher? Look at me for a second. And that's what he said. He said, Nick. I asked a, 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 a brother from Senegal, Doc, he told me the only place in the world where niggas need niggas with a white people. My best, one of my best friends is from Brazil. He <laughs> only calls his dark skin white on a red hey, nigga on a regular basis. Because of Brazil, if you go there, you want to know where the dark skin people are, you get on the train and say, hey, where the niggas at? Or you ever in my belts. It's a compliment. The only way to white boy is he took the turn it to turn it. Look at okay. him. Ask a human so. being. Yeah. So it's all depending on where you're vibrating and where the mind control programming is coming from. Now, not to say, I just got finished telling you, if I beat you to death and I called you nigga, remember, the beating alone is going to open you up and I'm dumping in a program inside of you called nigga. So, of course, the ones who were beaten and called that carry it within their DNA and it means something different. Yeah. With the young brothers who were not, who are breaking free, who are mutating into the next level of godhood, are like, yo, what's up, my nigga? We good. Mm -hmm. It's reversal. All right? So this is just some more pictures of, of the Nye guys. See the swords in his hand. And as, as uh, you know, at uh, A.A. she breaks down, that's nothing but the word. You know what I'm saying? He looks fierce. Some other pictures, some of the Nile guys. That's ill, right? All right, but <clears throat> let's come back to reality in America. This might be the new head nigga in charge. Because what do you call an educated black man in this country? A nigga. That's a running joke among white people. What do you call an educated rich black man in, in America? A nigga. Alright? So, I just wanted to give you a, a, a breakdown of the different definitions, the different meanings, and the different vibratory frequencies of the word nigga. And you gotta go home and research and get in where you fit in. <clears throat> Nas' last two albums, he was telling you something. He said, hip hop is dead, nigga. All you gotta do is put the two together. He's telling you in his music, in his album covers. So a lot of times, if he may have taken an oath or something and sold out, he may still leave some breadcrumbs. You know what I'm saying? He might have sold his soul, but he may still leave some jewels. He can't come out and directly tell you the truth. It's for you to figure out. As me and A.A. Rashid was breaking down on the way up here, his album before that was Street Disciples. So Street Disciples, hip hop is dead, nigga. For my Street Disciples, hip hop is dead, nigga. The one before that was God's son. God's son. But for my street disciples, hip hop is dead, nigga. You follow? And what you see now is something totally different. Okay? Alright, now I put this up. Uh, my man D. Brad likes wrestling and shit. We know the wrestling shit is phony. We know it's fake. Right? But we still watch the shit like the shit is real. The kids get into it, it's like this is real. 50,000 people go to the arena to watch the shit and the shit is fake. Right? So what does that tell you? We're not into what is real, per se. We just want to be entertained and we good. Same thing with Flavor of Love. Like you said, reality TV in which they take three weeks to four weeks to film a half hour show ain't reality. Can't be. You know what I'm saying? One day they're gonna be filming like Survivor or something. They're gonna move the camera too far to the left, and you're gonna see a nigga over there drinking a soda or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh shit! Because <laughs> shit ain't reality. <laughs> it's not. And Flav, understand the significance of Flav, they using his ass because they understand that a, a reemergence of the 80s hip hop is coming back strong. So they are 
taking and using this nigga to go into the past and shut the door. So when the youth, when this young man grew up and he want to know what public enemy was about, he going to have a hard time accepting the militant messages because all he going to see is flavor, Flav. You follow? So they used Flav to shut down a gateway 20 years ago, send a nigga back into the past. By giving him a show and let him buffoon himself today, he can close a doorway on the other end so when the next generation of trilog- uh, uh, warriors want that real pure hip hop, done. All right? So this is all we know this is fake. All this is fake. No different than this. WWE and reality TV is the same shit. This is all the same shit. They already know who's going to run this country. They already know who the next five presidents going to be. Already. You the one feeding into this shit like this is real. You the one cast your vote and like, yeah. You walking out of the booth like, yeah. Like you made a change or some shit. It's a joke. Look how you looking at on shit like you dirty mother. Huh? But this might be what it, uh, and, and the end result, they're going at each other, but they probably be on the same ticket. Don't be surprised if they not. I think that's what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Act like we fighting each other and then we just join together. You can't lose a black man and a white woman. Everybody's happy. Okay. We are. The whole movie, the contender, the whole movie, where it's a woman where they slate her to play Hillary Clinton. The same woman that they played her and was the one in Primary Colors who played John Travolta's wife who was Bill Clinton in Primary Colors. Wow, wow. So they're getting your mind ready. They're getting your mind ready for it. Obama is Morgan Freeman in Deep Impact. In Deep Impact. He shot and shoot something to the sky. Yes. Asteroids, the same, put you back there mentally, hyperdimensionally. Mm-hmm. You can make it all right to accept the black man as president. Yes, and, and, and in the, on the series 24, we had a black president, yeah, yeah. and they offed his ass. Yeah. They yes. They yeah, they killed him. Yes. So it's all lined up for you there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna move it along kind of quick. All right. Uh, this is Prescott Bush and Adolf Hitler. This is more things uh, change the more they remain the same. You know who Prescott Bush was, uh, you know, Skull and Bones. He was funding Hitler. You know, he made it seem like we was against Hitler. We was not against Hitler. They shut down a lot of his companies. He was funding. He was making big guap off this Hitler bit. All right? So then we had uh, George Bush Sr. and Saddam Hussein. Same shit. You follow me? He, he was rocking with him. That's his boy. The access of evil. You follow him? That's his boy. But, but I'm going to put them out there to dry. Yes. And now we have, we had that. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. It's a joke. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm. We need to give you some evil. You see what I'm saying? And you can focus in on that. It's the same goddamn concept. All right, I don't know what happened to that image. Okay, Obama was coming out off 99 Problems. Anybody see this? Well, you know, he was campaigning. He was coming off Jay-Z's joint, 99 Problems, but a bitch ain't one. Off the instrumental, of course. But just letting you know, 99 Problems. So, you know, he rocking with Jay. And it's interesting to me because the 99 Problems song is the ninth song on Jay-Z's Black Album. So you got three nines or three sixes, however you want to, you know, see, however you want to break it down. It's produced by Rick Rubin. And it's produced by Rick Rubin, big Satan worshiper. Okay, so understand how all of this stuff ties in. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is getting behind Obama right now. You know what I'm saying? Heavy. So we could see Obama, see, uh, uh, Black History Month is over now, so Hillary might come back strong. You follow how that shit works? You, you see what I'm saying? Uh, the boule is, is coming out hard against Obama. All them boule dudes and uh, Jesse Jackson and, and all them southern boule members because they down with, 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 with Clinton. And they steam right now because he, 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 he banging her out every state. And he won the 10th state. The 10th state he won was Hawaii, I believe. 
And 10th, because he had won like 10 or 11 in a row, but 10 is the kingdom. So he's, again, showing you that he's going to usher in or set up the new kingdom. Got to be careful with that. The KKK said they're going to smoke him. They sent a letter in saying, we're going to kill that nigger. So they had to beef up his security recently. You know what I'm saying? So, and Cheney and Obama, as my man mentioned, are related. So I just want to throw that out there really quick. And I'll end, I believe that's my last slide. I'll just leave that up there to show that we need to <clears throat> resonate on a whole different frequency. We need to open ourselves up and really resonate on different frequencies or we will become victims of all of this mayhem. And we can avoid this mayhem if we just stay inward brothers and sisters. So, are there any questions that we can get through? Questions. This is the first lecture I did and nobody asked a question. Either I did a very good job or a very bad job. <laughs> so, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the vinyl, as the brother in our uh, conference uh, recently broke down, it's, it captures the vibration itself of the sound. You see what I'm saying? Where the digital shit is a mimic of the sound. It's not the actual sound. And you know with the records, you, had, you also had that 40 uh, band equalizer, so you could tune it in to the frequency that really resonated with you. On the CD, you get hall, pop, and rock. Yeah, like that's, it's, that's why people ain't dancing like they used Right. To. Yeah. With the vinyl, people used to dance. And people are not healing with the music right. the way we used to hear. When I put on them Al Green records, I'm telling you, it's to go up. Well, and the needle itself. The needle itself well, it's a crystal. And the record itself is 360 and degrees. When you ain't watch the moms and know you was listening to the music on a record, you ain't you can just play the record without having the value. That's right. And still hear it. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So our people were healing. Yes. Oh, I love the X-Clan. <laughs> Actually, I'm going out to Houston to get up with the X-Clan. They invited me out to do a speaking engagement in the next couple of weeks. No, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. X-Clan is real. Give yeah, give them a back hand. <laughs> yes. In terms of the chocolate, how would one side tighten them up and get yourself together with your chocolate side? Uh, meditation, focus, intent. You know what I'm saying? Meditation, focus, and intent. And we have to also watch what we put in our bodies, which, uh, you know, help us to cleanse our chakras. You can take a sea salt bath, get some earth sea salt, and take a sea salt bath, which help remove some of the toxins. Sea salt, Bobby Hammett will use sea salt, a, a couple of caps of ammonia, a couple of caps of bleach, you know what I'm saying? And this would help to clean your chakras, get off some toxic waste from off our bodies because the music, the images, the chemtrails, the food, the music, the images, the chemtrails, the food, the music, the image, the paper, the this, the that, sex that we're not prepared to have, or you know what I'm saying, we, we're dealing haphazardly, all of these things shut us down or shut down the gateways in which we can ex exercise, you know, the greater side of opening up our chakras. And one of the major reasons why we locked into the lower chakras is because the lower chakras are in our centers of appetite when we eat. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that we continue to eat, we keep recapitulating all of the behaviors of the three lower chakras, which is the primacy, appetite, and ego are the three lower chakras. And those are the most pervasive concepts in the, in the common human dynamic as we interface everybody wanna have sex they wanna acquire a new taste for a new behavior or a new appetite 
and it's all localized around their perception of who they perceive themselves to be. But when you change your diet, your vibratory uh, level of your chakras raises automatically. Wow. Your appetites change. Mm -hmm. You no longer want refined food. You no longer want sugar. That, right? and you don't want <laughs> sugar in that picture. And being a vegetarian is not eating rice and beans and potatoes and soy. Mm -hmm. It's not a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Eat with the, the chakras is your tree of life. To make the tree of life work, you gotta eat from God's kitchen. There you go. You gotta go to it, to the tree. And if you have access to the internet now, yeah, you just type it in. And it, many different philosophies about, but they all generally are saying the same thing. You have to do the work for, you know what I'm saying, the tree to work for you and so forth and so on. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, um, I went to Jamaica and I went to uh, a person who was talking about that. And, but the crystals, mm -hmm. why is that important, these crystals? Well, crystals uh, can, can carry programs. You know what I'm saying? Crystals carry programs and help to, uh, a lot of information is stored on crystals. So for instance, I have crystals in my house and what I do is I clean them first, you know what I'm saying? Some, some salt water and stuff and clean them up really nice. And then I keep them in my right hand while I meditate. Because you know, your right hand gives off energy. So I want to program each and every crystal for protection around my house to create the vortex within my home so that, that you know, there's nothing, no harm can come in and out of my home. And then I strategically place them around you know, different places of the house with the program in them. Now you clean them first so that you can, whatever program was in them, you can kind of get rid of that particular program. And then you focus your energy. It's, it's a number of ways you could do it. Oh, you can buy them from any uh, Britannica. Any botanical, go online crystals, they're, they're different kind of crystals. Some are more powerful than others and so forth and so on, but they all carry Whatever program put into them, our blood is crystallized. Like, 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 if you want to use something, the same way people use their blood to replenish their blood and put information into you, you use hematite. Hematite in your blood have the same relationship. Hematite is a black stone. Mm -hmm. uh, people that's gray. When you gray, that means you're losing your copper content. You know, you might want to get some copper. Copper around his neck is a crystal. Mm -hmm. Copper is also known for its analgesic properties. You can put it on cuts and wounds, and it conducts. Crystals is inside of microchips. Yeah, exactly, you know exactly. And they, they hold what's called telluric force for intelligence. Everything in their existence is intelligent. Yes. It knows itself. Mm -hmm. So crystals have intelligence. But you, you don't want to have a crystal that has retained a lot of negative stuff because they have diamonds, like the Hope Diamond. Mm -hmm. It's cut in such a way that whoever owns it dies. Mm -hmm. So they can't, can't nobody own it. Mm -hmm. See, very important. When your skull is a crystal. Yes. This place where I went, she had her crystal strategically put on different places. Mm -hmm. uh, Some people wear them around their necks, you know what I'm saying, or this and that, and you know what I'm saying? So yes. So I wanted to, uh, a point I wanted to add, which Fundamentally, it may sound like it's a direct ice going against what Doc and Brother Hager are saying, but it's really not. Another technique, you know, and I can say this is in my life, when I go through personal, learn how to visualize. Because a lot of that, like I can't wear it at time because it breaks on me, which means my blood doesn't, I found out that I don't need it. Like I can put one on, I've had it, and I'll suddenly walk around the game, it's gone. It will suddenly just snap off me. And what happens is the technique that I was taught was to be able to visualize. Like, the reason why I don't really wear arms is because I visualize myself in capturing them. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't carry a crystal is because there's certain vibratory colors that I can, like right now, when I visualize, I'm covered, in my mind, my mind's eye, I'm covered in violet. So, you know, and I've often had cats, and I live in a hood, I don't, you know, I live in the candy, I'll be walking with kids clear in, in the whole nine, and, and I'm always in certain situations where things don't seem to happen that would happen to others around me. And I, and what, one thing that I would suggest in this day and age especially as well on top of all is start to learn as, as magical as it may sound to visualize because you never really know. Like I hear people talk about meditating, you have to sit in a certain situation. And I always say, what happens if you get in a car accident and you stuck? 
and he can't get the lowest position. A family. It's another thing to say the father's going to go here, the mother's going to go here, the children are going to go here, and you never can reconnect. This is why we really don't know how all connected we are due to, uh, you know, due to chattel slavery. This is some of the stock that's on Wall Street today. Let's not get it twisted. All right? Because they are still... They, they, a lot of these artists you see here, athletes, actors, they still control the stock market. This is why every now and then LeBron got to come down and ring the bell, or Jordan when he puts out a new sneaker, or when Jordan decided to come back and play in the NBA that one last time, you saw the fluctuation of the stock market. Now, how is this possible? It is possible because we are who we are, and they know we are the trendsetters of the world, especially hip hop. When Jay, if Jay Z come out and say we wearing green polka dot pants tomorrow, you better invest in some green polka dot pants if you want to get paid. So when he comes out and say this is the new liquor, in his rhyme just yesterday he got a new song out with Mary J. Blige, and he made the comment, "I'm the Obama." The Barack Obama of rhyme. So he plugged Obama's name in, and here it is. Obama, they asked him recently, whose number that you have on your phone that we might be very surprised about? And he said, M's, you're on your way. And to your next location, you might come to New York, to LIU, which is our underground railroad port, and you might get some information, and you can continue to be on your way. All right, this is just some of the maps that's showing, you know, some of the locations in which we migrate. All the dark, uh, you know, states, those were the slavery states and the north states, which everyone was migrating to, uh, you know what I'm saying, are the states where the so-called free states, and you see I'm doing free like this, okay? Bear with me, I might have to put this over on this side so I can stop. All right, this is just a little map breakdown of, of, of some of the key players. And see, it says stockholders of the Underground Railroad Company. So we were stock. We were the first stock. Okay, the very word Wall Street. Who was the first stock on Wall Street? Us. You see what I'm saying? So we need to be very clear with that. And, okay, let's, let the, this is just a, a picture of them. This is Wall Street, bringing that stock in, bringing us in, you know what I mean? Chattel slavery in particular, which is the worst kind because that means they had the right to break your family up. It's one thing to say, all right, I'm going to enslave you information and some secret documents never before seen about who, uh, who we are and things of that nature. So that's going to be at Long Island University. Sunday, March 9th. Does anybody know what March 9th is in hip-hop? March 9th. Biggie. Biggie. Biggie made the ascension. Ah, very good, very good. So that's going to be jumping off. Uh, donation is $15. Uh, you can contact Brother A.A. A. Rashid at 718-506-4518 or contact me, 917-292-292. 6769. Six, now, I put this up because we're close to the Underground Railroad, am I correct? This is a historic town where uh, Harriet Tubman was bringing slaves from the south to the north uh, on, on, the freedom, on the Freedom Trail. Yeah, this is Tim too. All right, you know what I'm saying? So she was a warrior. Uh, see, a lot of, a lot of, especially in hip hop today, they don't show the warrior images of our queens, of our sisters. They're not all, they ain't all got their butt out, this and that. A lot of them are warriors, and they, and they ready to go down for the struggle. So Harriet Tubman was putting it in. And remember, we are still. This is the underground railroad that we are rebuilding right here. This is why we are all here into the record books. <clears throat> so when people get the tape and they, you know. Brother uh, A.A. Rashid was just up here, will be presenting uh, occult symbolism in film, War Stars, not Star Wars, War Stars, Cinematic Sorcery and the Hollywood Sacrifice of Heath Ledger. You do know that that was a sacrifice. 
If you don't know, the brother's going to go into great detail about Heath Ledger and any t anything you've seen on television for more than like a day and they keep bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. It's something ritualistic that went on with it. You could tie it into the Super Bowl, uh, the Olsen twins. He'll get into all of that. Also, um, Vantage Point, The Golden Compass, Jumper, the movie out now where they dimension hopping and stuff we've been talking about for a while. Uh, you know, it seems like they watch our, our tapes <laughs> and then they go make movies. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Cloverfield, who, what, when, where, why, the whole breakdown. Uh, Brother Ampool from Philadelphia will come up to New York and he'll be breaking down the astrological autopsy of Hollywood. So he's going to go down on some ritual deaths and the astrological breakdown to show you how it was lined up cosmically. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, co-founder of Wu-Tang, one of the main producers, True Master will be in the building and he's going to have some groundbreaking. So it may not be a physical underground railroad, but remember, we, you know, we mental people, spiritual people. This may be more of a mental or spiritual underground railroad that we are putting in place right here right now. I felt Tupac was also a sort of Harriet Tubman because he delved in both worlds. He dealt with the thug life and all that, but he was also on some positive, dear mama, Brenda got a baby. So he was kind of going, hanging out with the thugs and saying, well, let's, you know what I'm saying? Get right at the same time. So what we're doing now is we are rebuilding this underground railroad everywhere we go around the country. So I wanted to open up with that. Okay, this is just some flicks with Harriet Tubman and some people she freed. Now she, she physically freed them. The mental uh, slavery is still going on as we know, but this is why we're here. We're here to uh, continue the work of our ancestors who came before us. It is our duty to do so. In the medium which we are Equipped to do so. You follow? So everyone ain't gonna pick up a gun. Some brothers are here to provide information. Rising Suns has an underground railroad outlet. So if you ever get lost along your spiritual journey, you stop in the Rising Sun bookstore, you pick up some gems.